Today we're going to be doing our shoulder x-ray. Uh, the four views that are most commonly done here for shoulder are internal, external rotation, grassy, and a Y view. So we're going to have a use our film size will be a 10 by 12 and for the internal and external and grassy views we're going to have it crosswise and for the Y view we're going to turn the film lengthwise. Our SID is going to be 40 inches. Our technical factors for the uh, internal and external are going to be 77 to 81 kV, automatic exposure control, and it will be center cell. I'm going to go ahead and shield the patient. Grab that thing. Okay. Have the patient put her back against here. If you want, you can bring her on across your chest, however it's comfortable for you. Our centering is a little bit different than uh, the Bontrager actually talks about. Uh, our radiologists want to see the entire clavicle on our shoulder views, so the centering is just a little bit different from what it is uh, in Bontrager. What we're going to do is we're going to find the mid clavicle area, and then we're going to, if we find that point, uh, we're going to come from the bottom part of that uh, down about an inch from the bottom of the clavicle, and that's going to be our centering point. Our collimation must include all the way the entire shoulder from the AC joint, uh, from the AC joint to the SC joint, and we're going to get all the way up to the top of the shoulder. We do want to make sure we use correct uh, marker placement so that it is not obstructing and is visible in the light field. We're going to be centered to our bucky. Our technical factors again for this view will be 77 to 81 kV, and then this is in, this is going to be uh, the lateral view. We're using the epicondyles are going to be perpendicular to the IR. You can do it by crossing the arm this way or you can just do it by arm straight down and rotating it so that the uh, epicondyles are again are perpendicular and this will be our lateral view. What is visualized uh, in the shoulder on this view right here is going to be the lesser tubercle. So this is our lateral view. Then we're going to go to our AP or external rotation of the arm. We're going to take the epicondyles now and place them so that they are parallel to the IR. Our steering point remains the same, mid-clavicle, finding again the bottom of the clavicle, uh, one inch down from that is our steering point. We're going to include all the way out to the, to the shoulder to the SC joint. Technical factors remain the same, 77 to 81 kV, center cell, uh, using automatic exposure control. Now what's visualized in this view, uh, the external rotation is going to be the greater tubercle. So this is our uh, AP or external rotation shoulder. Our next view we're going to do is going to be our grassy view. We're going to rotate the patient toward the affected side 35 to 45 degrees. And how we do our centering is we actually palpate the shoulder. We're going to put our hand on the our finger on the shoulder, we're going to roll it around, and as you go around, you'll notice that the finger sort of goes in, and we call that at the dip. That's so what we use, that's our language you use for it. And so that is going to be our centering point. So we'll adjust our patient so that that centering point both ways is at the dip. Okay? Then we'll have to look and make sure that we are centered. Our centering point is pretty close, and it does stay the same. Our collimation can change somewhat. We can go in because this view here is done for uh, the glenoid cavity or the glenoid fossa. Our marker placement again will be uh, placed within the light field but with not in uh, any pertinent anatomy. And again, the collimation can uh, get collimated pretty closely. Now this view here, our technical factors does change a little bit. Where the patient is oblique, we go up a little bit to about 81 to 85 kV uh, center cell and automatic exposure control. And this is our grassy view of the shoulder. Now the next view that we do is going to be our Y view. And I'm going to demonstrate both ways. There's an AP and a PA view that you can do for this. Commonly we do uh, the AP oblique, but it's also uh, done uh, posteriorly. So we're going to show you both and, and you can just use whichever one you feel comfortable with. So we're going to take the patient, we're going to oblique them, and there's a couple ways that people uh, like to do this. Some people will use their fingers and put on the, uh, the, the medial border of the scapula, spread them out, and then they'll rotate them so that when the fingers are spread out, they actually touch the bucky. Uh, that's their centering point. That right there makes the, uh, the border of the scapula perpendicular to the IR. 
From that point, we're going to have the arm across the, the belly there. It just sort of tells the patient, hold it still, don't move it. If they keep it to the side, sometimes they have a tendency to move it and it will rotate the patient. But by keeping them in that position, uh, across their abdomen, they tend to hold still. So now I'm just going to move her over so that uh, we're centering up this way to the film. So I'm going to center from the top of the shoulder about three to four inches down. And then we'll adjust our collimation. So what we can see uh, is what we call the, um, the Y view. And what makes up the Y view is the acromion, the coracoid, and the body of the scapula. We do have a little bit of light here at the top that we can use for our marker placement so it's not obstructing. And what this is done for is done for anterior and posterior uh, dislocations. Anterior dislocations are done approximately 95% of the time. So that's what we're going to see most commonly. And then 5% will be posterior dislocations. Now I told you that we were going to show you a couple different ways. And uh, what I want to show you is uh, we have a couple ways that a lot of uh, the technologists use. And I want to show you those also. And one is that some technologists will actually use their fingers and put on the body of the scapula up like this and then put it on the front of the shoulder and they'll line it up that way. When the fingers then line up, they know that the scapula is perpendicular to the board. Another way that I personally use is I use my finger and I just palpate the medial border of the scapula and I rotate them until my finger is now perpendicular. This distal part is perpendicular to the IR and then putting my other hand on the front of the shoulder, the center of the humerus, and then I match them up. When those two are straight up and down from each other, I know that the body of the scapula is perpendicular. So those are a couple different ways. Now I do want to show you uh, doing this the other, uh, the other way is we're going to rotate the patient. We're going to take and have the patient. I'm going to actually change and do the left, so I think it'll be easier for you to see. So we'll change markers. I'm going to rotate the patient again until I'm feeling the medial border of the scapula until they are perpendicular. Bring your arm across your abdomen there. Now, now we're going to turn. We do need to turn the shield here also. I forget to do that. We want to make sure that it's okay for right now. We're going to take and turn it back, back here so that we can uh, shield the patient properly. And I'm going to palpate the medial border. Again, I'm going to rotate it so it's perpendicular here to the IR. And then this most front part of the arm should be the center of the humerus, should be right in the center. And then my centering point is going to be right on the medial border of the scapula. Then we're going to make sure that we do have the correct marker placement. So we change, we do, are doing now the left, so I change it to the left marker. We do want to make sure that we turn the film down so that it is lengthwise. And then making sure then that we are centered. And again, this is our Y view uh, for the shoulder, and these are our shoulder views.